right, so we are going to spend a minute reviewing what we have done last time concerning the uh, translation dictionary uh, of translating mathematical terms from Spanish to Eng uh, from English to Spanish um, using delimited data, and then we're going to get into the XML example of it. One of the things that we'll look at is like, you know, what changes and what stays the same. Because a lot of the examples going to stay the same, but some important parts are going to be different as well. And so let me just open up this example. I'm going to download two things. Let me turn on the projector so you can see what I'm downloading in case you want to review it. Dictionary zip, and I'm going to download the revised XML. I'm not sure what I corrected in it because uh, I did this the previous semester, but if I'm not mistaken, the one that I want to show today is the revised XML. Get 
get words first of all, make sure that there's something in the text box. Because if there's nothing in the text box, I'm not going to bother the server and ask it to do a query for me. I'm just going to clear out that drop down. All right? So if I don't have anything in there, or if I have something that begins with a space, Nothing in there, boom. Doesn't bother the server. Just clears out the text box or the, the drop down. How does it uh, clear out the drop down? By pointing to the drop down using this syntax, which is a slightly different syntax. I could just as well use document get element by ID the way that I've done it in other cases, but this is just a different syntax. And I set the length of that drop down to zero. Uh, the length of the options. The drop down is really a collection of options, and I set those. The length of those options is zero, and that eliminates all of, all of the things. If, however, there is something uh, in the text box that gets passed in as arg entered, I form the request, which is simply dictionary1.php, question mark, word equals, and then the argument. I then go and set my ready state to call the create DD function, and then I send the request. All right. Um, I have two request objects, one to handle the one request, that is the forming of the dropdown, and the other to handle the translation. I could probably do it with just one, but I did two just to make sure that they wouldn't possibly interfere with each other. All right, the server gets called, and we looked at this code last time. We have in dictionary inc, we have what are called parallel arrays. Parallel arrays being where the same subscript in both arrays corresponds to the same entry. So for, for example, array sub zero is the English version. Uh, array element sub zero in the English array corresponds to array sub zero in the Spanish array. So they match up. So that's what's known as parallel arrays. We loop through for all the elements. We grab the word. We loop through for all the elements. We look to see if it matches. We spend a little bit of time talking about this instruction. Essentially, it's looking to see if the first so many characters of the word matches the string that we've typed in. If it does, we output the word, a semicolon, the index, and a colon. And we set none to false. If we made it through the whole loop and we haven't gotten uh, any matches, we output that. That gets sent back to the client. So the server's job is pretty easy, right? Loop through the list, output the matches in the format that the server or that the client is expecting. When this gets sent back to the server, we check to make sure the ready state is four, which means that, hey, we're done. We split that array twice. First, we split using the colon. That splits it down into an array containing all the matching words, where the first element is the word and the second element is the index. We loop through all the matches. We split it again using the semicolon, and then we form an option in the dropdown, and we add it to the list. We're creating a new option, a new thing in the dropdown, containing all, uh, the, the two array elements the word and the number that corresponds to it. Once we've selected and clicked translate, we uh, call get translation. That makes a request by grabbing the value. This is sort of an old style syntax. Uh, if I was doing this over, I would simply use get element by ID dot value. But this pulls from the dropdown the value of the selected index. The selected index is the one that the user has chosen. If that index is negative 1, then that means that it's that dummy thing saying that there are no matches, and therefore, and I don't go on any further. If, however, it is 1, I call dictionary 2, pass it the index, say display translation. Dictionary 2 is very straightforward. It simply grabs the index and returns the Spanish word that corresponds to that index. Again, remember we have parallel arrays. So the index of the English one is also the index of its Spanish translation. So the server really doesn't do anything fancy at all here at all. Uh, finally then, 
but the server returns. If the ready state is 4, in other words, if it finishes, it's simply going to take the value from response text and display it in the inner HTML, and there you have the answer. All right, any questions about that? Now let's imagine, let's think about what's going to change when we do this with XML. And I know we haven't talked about XML yet. We'll, we'll do that for a few minutes here. But let's imagine what's going to change. All right. Are we still going to have the two request objects? Who votes yes? Who votes no? <laughs> Not sure. We are still going to have the same two requests. Because there's still going to be two requests. The only difference is, is that we're going to send the data back in a different format. Are we going to make the request the same way? Yes. All right. The XML deals with how we're going to send the, the data from the server back to the client. We're going to request the data the same way. We're going to send to the server the word that was entered in the text box and ask for a response. So that part is going to change. Is the server piece going to change? Well, of course. The server piece is going to change to send the data back as XML and not as uh, delimited text. Is this going to change? Well, yes, this is going to change because it's now getting the data back as XML. It's not getting the data back as a delimited data. So it's going to parse that data in a different way. It's going to take the chunk of data that gets back from the server and pull it apart in a different way. Now, there's two requests on this page. There is a, uh, a request for the list of words, and then there's a request for the translation. I did not do anything for the translation part of it, for the second request. That stays identical, because it's such a simple request that using XML to simply return one word would be a vast amount of overkill. All right? So therefore, I do not, uh, I do not use um, XML for that. All right, let's spend a minute talking about XML. How many of you are familiar with XML at all? A little bit. All right. Um, the language that you probably uh, do know that is very close to XML is HTML. Well, they, you can tell they're, they're related because they both end with ML, right? And the ML stands for markup language. And markup language is really a fancy way of saying it uses tags to indicate what something means. All right? So, for example, in an HTML page, we have an H1 that tells the browser what that what this text means, right? In other words, how does a browser know that that's a heading and not just simply a paragraph or a link or something like that? It knows it because we've tagged it. We've put it between a starting and ending tag. So that tells the browser what it means. And if you think about it, all the tags in HTML are simply telling the browser what that content means. Use a link tag, use an A tag. tell the browser that the words link to Google is actually a link to Google, right? In other words, if I add link to Google in an H1 tag, it wouldn't be a link, right? It would be a heading. HTML, tell the browser what the data means. So the browser can do what it needs to do with it. Now in this example, we are returning back a list of words in English followed by their index in the array. So, when we send back the limited data, the data
data looks like this. And so on. Now, how do we know what that represents? Well, we know because we made up this data. We know that the first thing is the word and the second thing is the index and the array. There's nothing in that data that tells us what that means, though. All right? So this data, by itself, you have to know about the data to be able to do anything with it. All right? To know what that means. In XML, the data contains a description of what the data is. So, for example, we might get back in XML if we did a query for a bunch of books. The limited data might say this, Moby Dick, Melville, Herman, Paperback. Tale of Two Cities. Dickens. Charles. Hardcover. Uh, David Copperfield. Dickens. Charles. each of those things map, right? You'd have to know that the first thing is the title of the book. The second thing is the author's last name. The third thing is the author's first name. And the fourth thing is the type of the book, all right? Our program would have to know that, right, for it to work, all right? There's nothing in the file that tags it, that, that says, like, what each thing means. Additionally, if I wanted to do something like group together, all the books that a particular author wrote, I'd have to write some code to figure out, okay, this was written by one person, these two were written by a second person, and so on, if I wanted to break it down by person, let's say, by author. All right? So I have to know about the data, and I have to write code to make relationships between pieces of data if I use a delimited data approach. With XML, we would tag the data. So maybe we would do something like this. Books. Difference between XML and HTML is you get to define your own tags in XML. And as long as everyone using it knows what tags you use and what rules you follow, people are able to read your data. It's in a very specific format. It's like HTML. You always have to have an ending tag, though. All right, you can't use uppercase letters for tags. You can't use... Let me rephrase that. It's, the tags are case sensitive. So um, author with a capital A would be a different tag in XML than author with a lowercase a. But I can do something like this. Author... First, last, book, 
to, to, to display it, true, but I don't have to make a right code to establish a relationship, because that relationship's already built into the data. Whereas with the limited data, that relationship really isn't built into the data. I have to figure it out. I have to match up things. All right? This is self-descriptive. In other words, if I gave this to someone, gee, they know that this is an author. Whereas this, that could be the author, that could be the illustrator, that could be the publisher, that could be the editor, that could be the translator. You don't know by looking at this data. Whereas this data, it describes what the data consists of. All right? So we're going to use this idea to send back from the client, from the server to the client, the data in this example. This is going to be self-descriptive. All right, let's look and let's compare the two. All right, I'm going to pull up the uh, data that comes back from the server um, in the delimited format. I'm going to pull back the same data that will come back um, in uh, XML format. server, I have the delimited version. In the XML portal I, folder, I have the XML version. So, let's look at the data that comes back in the delimited version. So I can see how the data comes back by just typing in the URL of the PHP script. So if I were to do a search for A, that's what I get back. I get back just this blob of data. And I have to know, if I'm writing code to process this, I have to know that the semicolon splits the word pair into the word and index, and there's a column uh, or a colon between the word pairs. And that the first one is a word, the second one is the index and the array. There's nothing in the data that tells me that. I only know that because I know this data. If I look, however, in the XML version, which is in the XML subfolder, this is what I get. And it's self-descriptive, right? It leads to a degree. This is my list of words, word list. Here's the first item, item. Item, item. So those things are grouped together. Was the word associated with the first item? Absolute value. Was the index associated with it? Zero, and so on. What observation can we make about the size of the data between these two? Which ones, which one provides, which one, which one is the data smaller and which one is the data bigger? Which is the data longer here? Or is the data longer here? Well, let's think about it. This contains a word and index. This contains a word and index. For each word, this contains two extra characters. Two characters of overhead, we'll call that. In other words, stuff that isn't the actual data, but stuff that we need to process the data. So this has two extra characters for every word pair. This one also has the word in index, so that part is even. But instead of two extra characters per word pair, there is one, two, three, four, five, I think, or six, plus the 
end tag, that's 7, plus this, that's another 6 and 7. So I think we're up to 26, if my counting is right. Another 7, that's 33. Uh, 41 characters. So there's 41 characters of overhead for each word pair. So this, the XML way, is going to return a lot more data. All right? So that's a big disadvantage to it, is that it returns more data. So if you're sending back simple data, like maybe just a list of things, and especially if you're sending back a lot of it, then maybe delimited data is the way to go, because there's less data going back, less traffic going back and forth between the client and server. There's less data going back and forth. But if you're sending back data that is highly structured, in other words, where there's a hierarchy, all right, then maybe XML is the way to go, because in XML, you actually get the hierarchy of the data included uh, in the data itself. All right? This is characteristics. Why we did, on a project I did years ago, we did studies, and, and with the limited data, there was approximately one-tenth the data in, in our example, right around one-tenth of the data that there was in XML data. So XML is a, a more complex solution, and it is, uh, involves sending back larger pieces of data than with the limited data. But it provides a lot of advantages, the ones that I've mentioned. That, that it's self-describing to a degree. It tells you what every piece is. And it's able to show a structure better. All right? So let's look to see how this is processed. and how we create it, and how we process it. So, let me go here. We talked briefly about what stays the same and what is different. Let me just point out to you what stays the same and what's different as far as the client side. We create the same two request objects that we do on the client side. All right, that stays the same, because we still have two requests. Let me run, by the way, the XML version. Just to show you that it works the same. Different. 
And then this function is going to be different. Uh, this function is going to be different because we're processing the data in a different way. Now that second request to get the translation, I haven't changed anything for. That's not using XML. Because again, all I'm returning is one word and there's no need to use XML for something that simplistic. So really, the two things that we have to look at are, number one, we have to look at what the server outputs. And that's going to be pretty easy. And then secondly, we have to look to see how the client takes a response from the server and formats it. That's probably the hardest part of this example. All right. So let's start with the easy part. How does the server take the request and format it? A couple of things. First of all, right off the bat, we identify that we are returning XML instead of plain text. That's important because we want the client to know that it's getting back XML so it can process it correctly. All right, so that line of code is important. That's simply telling the browser what kind of data it's getting. Now notice that the shell of the code is the same. The only difference is, is that we're including HTML, I'm sorry, not HTML, XML tags as part of the data. So I'm creating a results variable that contains what I'm going to output to the server. I'm outputting a word list tag. As I loop through, if I found a match, again, that part's identical. If I find a match, I output the English word and the index, just like I did here, well, sort of like I did there. Instead of directly outputting it out, I'm putting it to a variable. The only difference is I'm interspersing it with some XML tags. So instead of using a delimiter of a colon and a semicolon, I'm using the item XML tag, the word XML tag, the index XML tag. When I'm all done, I add the end word list and then output the results all at once. All right? Really, not that big of a difference. Uh, instead of outputting a delimiter uh, with the data, I'm outputting XML tags so that I get the output in the format that I've desired. So the big changes here are I identify I'm sending back XML and I identify the data by enclosing it in XML tags. Word list is a root XML tag. Every XML file has a root. That is one tag that's at the root. And then all the rest of the XML tags I have here. So that is pretty straightforward. Now, this gets a little more complicated. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave the original out there but I am going to delete the, the, the code that I don't really need for this example. So I don't want to confuse. simply shows alternatives to doing it this way. Alternatives to outputting the data in a, in a drop down. I output the data in a table and so on. I wanted to show, the reason I put that in is I wanted to demonstrate that you can output the data, um, the, the XML data that you get back from the client, you can output a, a variety of different ways. So that's why I output it in a variety of different ways. But that just sort of muddies the water in this example. So I got rid of that code. Let me just double check for sure to see that it still works. 
I didn't go too far in eliminating um, unnecessary code. All right, still works. And it doesn't display all that other stuff. You can take a look at that by all means if you want to, but this is the part that's essential for the example that we're giving. Okay, so let's look at this. First difference that we have about this in create DD in the XML version is, all right, this part's the same. We clear out, actually I can get rid of these two as well. We'll check to see if the ready state is for. We're simply looking to make sure it's done. We eliminate all the drop down, uh, all the, the options from the drop down by setting the length of that drop down to zero. Same thing as we've done before. Now, I'm using the data, the data that comes back to this, because we've identified on the server that we're sending back XML, the data that comes back is in a different place. In the early example, the data came back in the variable response text. Because this is XML data, it comes back in the variable response XML. All right? Response text is simply a plain old string. Response XML is an XML object. And the keyword there is string versus object. What sounds like we could do more stuff with it, a string or an object? An object, right? Objects typically have methods, functions that we can call, whereas a string is just a string. There's some methods, but not as many as there's likely to be with an object. So we grab our XML object, and where we grab from our XML object all of the things that have the tag item. Now, this should look real familiar to you, get element by, because we use that all over the place in JavaScript. The difference is, is we're using get element by tag name. So we're not getting things that have a specific ID, we're getting little mini pieces of XML. We're getting every tag in our output that's an item tag. So we have an array of item tags. show you what we got. Here's the request that we make. We get back an XML object. We grab from that XML object everything that has an item tag. All right? And we have an array of those item tags. So the first element in that array is an XML block that consists of this little piece of XML. The second thing we have is an XML block that consists of this little piece of XML, and so on down the line. So for however, however many words we have, however many item tags we have, we have an array that contains a little XML piece. Response XML contains all of the XML. Items is an array of all of these item tags, and each array element is a little mini piece of XML. So we're going to loop through that array. That is, we're going to loop through each word. However many item tags there are, that's how many words we have. We're going to grab the word 
and we are going to grab the index using this syntax. Items one, get element by tag name. So we're looking within each XML item. We're looking for the thing that has a tag of word and the thing that has a tag of index. That's what this is doing. Now, because get element by tag name could return more than one tag, we have to specify which one we want. Well, in our case, we're only returning one, so we're looking for the zeroth element. So what this says is this says, give me an array of HTML XML tags, all right, for all the item tags. Here we're looping through all those item tags. We're looking at each item tag individually and saying, give me the first word tag within that item tag. Give me the first index tag within that. And then we look at the next XML element. So we're looking at each of these in turn, and we're then grabbing the word, grabbing the index. After we do that, we simply create a new option, sort of like we did before, except we use node value. First child node value. First child node value is simply a fancy way of saying we have the tag called word and we have the tag called the index. Give me the value of that tag. So we've created the, the option the same way. We've just pulled the data out of the file the same way. So you can see this is a little more involved. And if we had a complex structure where we had authors with books and books with versions and all that, we'd have a few more loops in there to loop through and grab all the books for an author and grab all the versions for the book and so on and so forth. But in this case, you see, really XML is not as intimidating as uh, it might seem at first because XML has uh, uh, methods associated with it that does a lot of the work for us. So we can use that get element by tag name and pull out the pieces from the XML file that we want. We get back then an array, and then we can examine each element of that array. Any questions on this?